Jefferson Cooper 360. Next on CNN. Heavy metal guitarist who has connections to the Oath Keepers is the first Capitol rioter to plead guilty. John Ryan Schaefer was initially charged with six federal crimes. He pleaded guilty to obstruction of an official proceeding and entering a building with a dangerous weapon. He admitted carrying bear spray into the Capitol complex during the formal certification of the Electoral College votes on January 6th. Lawyers on both sides agreed that a prison sentence is appropriate, a prison sentence of between three and a half years and four and a half years if he cooperates, which he has agreed to do. This is incredible, right? He has agreed that he should go to prison for three and a half to four and a half years. It's, it's incredible. The Justice Department is heralding this plea, which comes exactly 100 days after the Capitol attack. Thank you so much for joining us. You can watch Outfront anytime on CNN Go. Thanks for watching. AC360 starts now. There is no way in good conscience to use the word good evening tonight, though there are many words to choose from. Mournful, tearful, and yes, as a country, shameful. Good is simply not one of them. Not after what happened overnight. When we began this program last night, we noted that between the police killing of Dante Wright, the trial of Derek Chauvin, and the police shooting of a seventh grader, it was, in so many words, a lot. Then, late last night, a gunman opened fire at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis. Eight people were killed by a 19-year-old former employee. Several others were wounded or hurt. Countless more tonight are living the nightmare, losing someone close. And the toll extends beyond the victims and their next of kin. Now, this we know from experience, the shock waves they ripple out over, over time and distance. Fourteen years ago tonight, the country was reeling from the loss of 32 lives on the campus of Virginia Tech University. Do you remember that shooting? A month ago, we were watching the horrible images come in from two mass shootings in and around Atlanta. Seems a long time ago, doesn't it? The sad fact is, though, that mass shootings have become so common, it may soon be hard for one not to fall on the anniversary of another. This is a map of mass shootings in just the last month, which we're defining as four or more people shot, wounded, or killed, excluding the gunmen. One other thing to note, there is only room on the map to show a little less than half. The full count, again, over just a single month since the Atlanta shootings is 45. And the map, as profound as it might be, doesn't do justice to the story. It doesn't capture the horror. It doesn't capture the wounds and the deaths of so many Americans. The map doesn't tell the story of the five people who were shot and wounded on March 17th in Stockton, California, or the four shot in Gresham, Oregon, a day later. In Houston on the 20th, five shot at a nightclub. That same day in Dallas, eight people shot and one killed. In Philadelphia that night, someone opened fire at a party, killing one and wounding five. At least 150 others fled for their lives. Then on March 22nd in Boulder, a gunman opened fire at a supermarket, killing 10, including a local police officer. The consequences of all this are deeper than I think 